Social Reconstructionism. There is not one agreed upon definition for the term social reconstructionism. It has been called many things and described in various ways. The new sociology of education. The reconceptualist curriculum theory. One definition refers to social reconstructionism as a new variety of progressivism sensitive to cultural transition and the philosophy of the future. Another definition offers that social reconstructionism is a social curriculum theory that improves and reconstructs society using education as the vessel for change. The term was defined by the works of well-known writers such as George S. Counts in the popular book Dare the School Build a New Social Order? Writings began to question the state of affairs after World War I and during the Great Depression. The works of these writers influenced the movement that is now referred to as social reconstructionism. You know, I was just thinking, what if everyone in the world lived in one house? Though there is not one agreed upon definition for social reconstructionism, all social reconstructivists believe that our world is our shared house and the future of society calls for progressive social change, cooperative culture of society that focuses on the we. Education for change. Education is the vessel for change. School teachers are the architects of the new social order. Theorists believe that teachers are the makers of society. Schools as social agencies. Schools should have educational practices that impact social forces and varying political and social interests. After World War I and the Great Depression, citizens felt unsettled with the current laissez-faire capitalism and social Darwinism. Philosophers began questioning the social drift. During the Great Depression, Society was further influenced and in search of an alternative social, political, and educational model that the current philosophy, progressivism, could not provide. Reconstructionism emerged in the 1920s, mostly influential after the Depression-era summer of 1934. The social reconstruction movement emerged as a form of progressivism, believing that the progressive movement was too methodical and overly focused on the methods of inquiry and problem solving. Social reconstructionism formed the concept of the school as a social vanguard. And the book, The Educational Philosophy of Reconstructionism, Moran illustrates the relationship of society, reconstruction, and schools. The reconstructionist would thus appear to have as his chief aim the reconstruction of society, and as his chief instrument the school and its attendant profession, which are a part of society. Born out of the flaws of progressivism, social reconstructionism emphasized that all values are integrated in every genuine learning experience. Social reconstruction is a philosophy that applies the belief that sociology can examine and reshape schools so schools have an impact on the political and economical future of society. It has been referred to as utopian socialism. Learning is perceived as social self-realization. Social reconstructionists see educational philosophies as theories of cultural change. The theory calls for schools to take the lead in reconstructing social order. Social reconstructionists call for schools to lead the way to a new and improved social order with less capitalism. Schools began to revise their curriculum to include studies in political, economical, and social interests. Social reconstructionists believe that progressivism lacks the utopian nature of reconstructionism, which looks towards the future for the society. Teachers are the group most dedicated to democratic values, most knowledgeable about cultural trends, and in the most strategic position to direct social change. Teachers were believed to be the most instrumental figure in social reconstructionism. Schools provide students with strategies for dealing with crises that confront the world. Society is constantly in need of change. This is a prominent point of the theoretical foundation. The cultural change that is constant must be recognized. 
Hello, my name is Kimberly, and I will be discussing the strengths of Reconstructionism, the weaknesses, and key influential people. The strengths of Reconstructionism. Reconstructionism emphasizes the importance of the student's personal development during learning, making the student's learning an essential aspect of Reconstructionism. Researchers have noted the strengths of Reconstructionism embody the belief that education is an important tool for the construction of a democratic society. According to Milanovic, philosophers of the theory argue the purpose of education is to provide service and awareness to the reconstruction of society. Reconstructionism calls for the teacher and the student to be social change agents as they focus on social issues. Students then have an increased awareness on social and political matters. Weaknesses. According to Kantai, the terms liberal and radical have been associated with Reconstructionism due to the ideals that society is in need of a change. The philosophy holds that education is the most effective instrument of making social change in an educated and democratic way. In addition, the theory also gained criticism due to incorporating controversial issues into curriculum. Theodore Bramlett, the theory's founder, believed no issue was out of bounds for discussion and critical thinking in the classroom. Nevertheless, many philosophers became concerned about how teachers would incorporate controversial topics and diffuse debates. In his article, Parks notes, the issues of developing strategies to discuss controversial issues in the classroom and the notion of teachers being activists for social change in the classroom. Theodore Bramlett, Father of Reconstructionism. Theodore Bramlett is the father of Reconstructionism. As many education reformers before him, he was inspired by the social issues of his time. During the period Bramlett developed Reconstructionism, World War II was taking place. Considering education's effect on society, he believed education could make fundamental changes to society. Thomas states, Brownlee believed education could assist in the transformation of economics, politics, and culture. Bramlett put his theory into action in what is known as the Floodwood Project, where he incorporated Reconstructionism into the curricula of Floodwood High School in Minnesota. Influential Key People Bromwald was inspired by many education philosophers who believed that education was the key to social change. Bromwald was influenced by education theorist George Counts as the two proposed improvements in education that would reflect and improve society. In addition, Bromwald adopted and incorporated the ideals of John Dewey, Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud, and W. L. Warner into his philosophy. Another influential person was Kenneth Hovitt, who assisted Bromwald in the Floodwood Project. Hello, my name is Cynthia Wellborn, and I will be discussing the advantages and disadvantages of social reconstructionism as well as its uses in K-12 education. I want to start with disadvantages because I believe that the strengths of utilizing social reconstruction in the classroom easily outweigh the disadvantages, and I will be discussing this later in my philosophy of education statement. Also, just as a note of reference, I will be using the term constructivism because that is the term I found most often in the research and it correlates most closely with my view of what social reconstructionism is all about. Critics argue that since constructivism has multiple definitions and applications, that it therefore cannot fully be researched and developed into a coherent educational theory. Related to this is the idea that little research has been done to provide evidence of constructivism success in the classroom. Of these potential disadvantages, I think the last two are the most problematic. Critics allege that teachers in a constructivist setting can be less knowledgeable in their subject matter and that school climate is geared toward a different way of thinking. And therefore, teachers who attempt to apply constructivist theory to their classrooms will not meet with much success. There are many advantages of constructivism, however, but I will focus on these four. First, constructivism requires students to make meaning from the world around them. Constructivism encourages students to create meaning for themselves, rather than experience an environment in which meaning is located in the authority of the teacher or textbook. Second, constructivism is an amazing way for teachers to connect with a diverse student population, 
because constructivism allows for multiple meanings and applications. Students' racial, ethnic, social, religious, and political differences become their strengths in a constructivist classroom. Constructivist classrooms foster equity and respect because both the students and teacher play the role of learner in the quest for knowledge. Lastly, research has shown that constructivist classrooms have more success with creating engaged citizens than do classrooms ruled by other theories. Constructivism has gained momentum in America's schools as well as abroad, despite the political pressure to increase standardization of curriculum and assessment. One example of how teachers are implementing constructivism in Australia is the 5C framework, discussed in an article by Professor Mary Tom of Central Queensland University. This framework allows students to set their own goals for learning. Her implementation of the 5C framework resulted in many benefits for her students, including less classroom-related stress, increased engagement, engagement, and a deeper understanding of concepts. An example of how constructivism is being implemented in the United States can be seen in Tony A. Swanson's discussion of using a critical pedagogical approach when teaching information literacy standards. He argues that students come into the classroom with a wealth of knowledge and experience and that teachers should build on these things instead of fight them. He states that students' perspectives on the world are valid and should be honored. Honoring students' perspectives and allowing them decision-making power aren't just for secondary classrooms. Authors of The Negotiated Project Approach, an article published in the Early Childhood Education Journal, outline a first-grade project that involved students successfully exercising ownership of their learning. Middle schoolers can benefit greatly from constructivist teaching as well, as shown by an article by researchers Lolly and McEwen, in which students successfully developed and implemented their own community-based inquiry projects. In conclusion, although constructivism does have its share of disadvantages, research indicates that teachers who create constructivist classrooms experience great success with helping students to develop not only content knowledge, but critical thinking skills and social awareness as well. My personal philosophy of education has been greatly influenced by my experiences in the schools in which I've taught. Teaching within a traditional academy for the past eight years, I clearly have been in a progressive model of education theory. I've recently been introduced to the STEM model, STEM standing for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. My two 11-year-olds attend the recently honored number one STEM academy in the nation, and I see them exposed to various political and economic issues at home and also outside of our nation. And it makes me realize that our schools do need to be the vessel for social change, whatever that means for each level of schooling. It will look completely different in a pre-K classroom than it will in a middle school. But regardless of the curriculum I deliver, regardless of the level of differentiation I provide, whether it is challenging a student or remediating with basic skills, at the elementary level in which I teach, I believe in tireless teaching to all the senses, most importantly the heart, so they will have a passion to work hard, learn everything they can, and become the change they want to happen. Kimberly's personal belief statement. My individual philosophy on curriculum includes the idea that every child deserves an equal opportunity to achieve an education, regardless of their background. Education should be hands-on and integrate different subject areas and current events. As many social education philosophers, I believe that curriculum should be student-centered and focus on active learning. Student learning should be present to the teacher and the student and their parents. As we learned in the lecture, Integrated Models of Curriculum Construction, I agree that integrated curricula is essential in increasing a student's understanding of the material being taught, allowing them to apply the material in the different facets of life. Therefore, learning is not only important for the teacher, but the students as well. I find that my philosophy of teaching aligns strongly with social reconstructionism. I think that our public education system is one of America's greatest strengths, but that this system is often under attack by those who seek to control what happens in America's classrooms. This cannot be. Teaching is about the people in the room. Lawmakers aren't in the room. Students are in the room. The creation of meaning has to start with them. It may be possible to dictate facts to students, but not critical thinking, not deep understanding, not empathy, not tolerance. These things cannot be dictated. These are the fundamental ideals that I hold as a teacher. I walk into the classroom as a fellow learner, not as an authoritarian. 
My philosophy of education is not based on emotion or whim, but on research. The nation's foremost thinkers in education, including Alfie Cohn and Sam Weinberg, are revolutionizing the field by challenging the recent political efforts to standardize curriculum and assessment. To quote Weinberg, the problem is not the content of textbooks, but the very idea of them. In other words, it is deadly to present knowledge to students as static and not up for debate. First of all, that is simply not true. And worse than that, this approach has a devastating impact on student motivation and morale. If you truly want to teach students, don't merely teach them, empower them. These references were utilized in the creation of our screencast on social reconstructionism.